Welcome to Space Apps 2020, the COVID-19 challenge, and I'm excited that you're all here to participate. My name is Kyra, and I'm a Space Apps ambassador. Feel free to reach out to me through Rocket Chat, Twitter, Instagram. I'm here to help out as much as I can, and let's get started. With the use of a couple of Python libraries, we'll be representing open data through sound. This is an intro to data sonification. Okay, so how? First, we go to the open NASA data portal to set up your account. Then we'll brainstorm a different ideas. We'll read through an article that shows how to brainstorm because surprisingly, there are little tiny things that we may miss out. And after that, we'll try out a sample data that I have set up. And from there, we'll get you rigged up with your Python environment. And then we'll start sonifying that data. Head on over to open.nasa.gov, which is the NASA Open Data Portal. Find a data set that you may want to try and download that CSV. But for now, we're using a sample data set that I've looked for. Open down NASA.gov, click that data card. Wait until it opens up, go to the data catalog. Right, for this specific data set, we'll look at global landslides. But you can see there are different categories here that you can check. For me, the easiest thing is finding a keyword and just popping it in the search bar. This looks pretty good. Awesome. You can see more information about that data set here. Um, there are a few tabs on the upper right. You can export the data. You can view it as is. There's an API that you can call to to retrieve that data, but for now, we'll just ex export it as a CSV. Download that. Cool. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're going to brainstorm different ideas. What would you like to explore? And I suggest reading this article from Harvard Business to give you a little bit more idea. better brainstorming. So just a quick overview of the article. It asks what process should we follow, setting the stage for your idea. Find something that you care about. Skimming through, then brainstorm the questions from those ideas that you care about or those topics. Identify a challenge based on that topic and stick to it. And then from there, keep iterating. You can keep reading the article as much as you want. But for now, we'll move on to the next segment. Open up Google Sheets, create a blank sheet, and import the CSV data we downloaded before from the NASA Open Data Portal. And from there, we'll see what the data looks like. We can pick out things that we want from it, columns that we want to explore. OK, we're importing that data. Depending on the file of your data, sometimes the import may take a little bit longer. Just leave that as is an import. 
we're basically just gonna briefly check what this data looks like and what may we want to retrieve from it. There are two columns that I am interested in, which is the event date and also the fatality count. These are global landslide reports. It talks about different types of natural disasters, mudslide, landslide in different countries. The event dates are not in any order. The fatality count has some outlier values that are up to 1,000, so we want to avoid that. And we'll look through this in Python a little bit more. So setting up with Python, we download Python 3, download Jupyter Notebooks, and download Python libraries. Now, if you're not familiar with programming, this may be a little difficult, but I suggest that you still give it a shot and keep going with it. And if you need any help, please feel free to reach out. Go to the Python website. They have a list of available versions that you want to install. Download the most recent one by clicking that download button. Then unzip that folder, install that Python 3. Let's go to Jupyter Notebooks next, their install page. You can either use pip or conda to install Jupyter Notebooks. I prefer pip, but feel free to use any type of Python installer that you think best suit your needs. With those Python installers and I'm using pip, I want to install a few libraries that I'm going to use. I want to install NumPy, Pandas, DateTime, and the little magic library, MidiTime. For those not familiar with this environment or these type of installers, I'm using a terminal window on my Mac and typing in these command. Again, feel free to reach out if you need any help with installing these Python libraries. We have all that set up. Let's run Jupyter Notebook Make sure you also have a MIDI player available. I use GarageBand. Um, we're going to check out different scales and have fun. First, I want to clean that data. So I'm importing pandas as pd and importing numpy as np. I'm referencing panda to read that CSV. After that, I just want to see what that value looks like. You don't have to put df dot hat. And I'm referencing the columns that I want to take in, which is the event date and fatality count. I'm creating a function that will clean my data set, specifically the event date. I just want the month, year, and day at one at a time. So it's separated by a string, and I only want the first set of characters left of that space string. I'm going to apply that clean method. 
and then I want to sort those event dates. After that, I want to write it to a CSV file called clean data landslide.csv. And I don't want any index on it. And then run that just to make sure it's good. On a new file, I'm importing daytime. And then from MIDI time, that MIDI time, I'm importing MIDI time. I'm also going to import pandas again. And I'm also importing numpy. I want to reference to MIDI time class. So the first thing I'm going to do is instantiate a MIDI time class. It accepts a couple of values when you instantiate it. One is the tempo of the song. By default, it's 120 BPM. The second one is an output file destination, so the name of the file that you want to write it to. The third one is the number of seconds per year. So if you have 2000 as a year, then that will be four seconds per that year. The fourth one is the octave of the song. the number of ranges or number of octaves that you're allowed to range over. So for this instantiation, I will be using an 80 BPM. I'm gonna Output it to data sonified.mid. I'm gonna use seven seconds per year, three octaves, add three octaves, and I want it to go over over four ranges of octaves. This is what a note looks like using the MIDI time library. What is this list? So Zero is the starting time. That's where the note starts. 60 is the pitch. So that's the value. And what is 60 specifically? That's middle C. 127 is the velocity, meaning how fast it enters its attack. And three is number of beats the note has, so its duration. Yep, so time, pitch, velocity, duration. And we're just going to keep this up there as a reference. Time to get that data. Okay. Import and instantiate the data that we cleaned earlier.
So we're gonna ask Panda to read that CSV to us. I'm going to print it out just to see what that looks like. Nice. That's exactly what I want to see. Cool. We're going to create a date object all the columns under, for all the objects in the column event date. So I'm going to clean it up. So the date object we're going to convert it into is an int. I want to get the year. This is what X looks like at the moment. So month zero is the placement, one is the day, and two is the year. So in the array zero, one, two. So this is in the first place, and this is in the second place, which is one. And now we're making a time object. So date time dot date time and then pass in the year, month, and day, and I'll return the date. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we'll terminate that date. Now we're gonna clean up the string dates in the column using that function that we just made. That looks good. After that, we have to account for the man values or the empty spaces in the fatality count column. And we're going to replace them with zero. If you're thinking, yes, I could have done this for the other file. But let's do it here. Um, we'll call fill now and place it with zero. Let's see how that looks like. Just to see if my code's going well. Cool, All right. Now we want to sort date by ascending order. Since these are time objects, they will be sorted based on time on the ascending order. So the oldest year would go in first. And 
that would be 1988 to 2017. We'll see this in the song what that looks like. Okay, so we want to convert the CSV into a list. And then we'll say records because we want that list. Basically a list with objects inside them in JSON format. Okay, now we want to convert the list of daytime object into integer of day since the epoch, which is January 1, 1970. This is just basically a timestamp that certain programming languages uses to reference a date, and it converts a date object into an integer. pass in an object with key days and support. We're going to call the library my MIDI and it has a property days and support that takes in an, a value or a time. And then We'll pass it in another property called fatality count. And then we're just going to reference the actual fatality count. Then we're going to iterate through our list. Cool. So that's now a list of converted time objects into integers. And then we want to create an actual beat or times into it, to our song. Now that we have integers instead of actual time objects, we're going to create another list that references those integers. Oops, data, not date. Right. And we're going to pass it in an object. Beat called the library again. My MIDI, my MIDI has a property beat, and we're gonna pass it day since epoch. Okay, fatality count is the same d and axis that key fatality count, and then we're gonna reference the list. 40 in my data epoch. Oh no, it says date. We want data, not date. But um, okay, the starting date of the original data. Since we're referencing 1970 based on that um, time object to integer converter, you want to make sure that it doesn't start at 1970 and it actually starts at the original date on the timeline. So get the first date, zero, 
we want to start on that beat. I'm just going to clean this up real quick. It's cause it's not the same variable name. Okay, now the fun part. So we want to associate a note. Her data point, and we're going to pass in that data through this helper function. So, data to pitch tuned, uh, um, put in the argument, um, put in the parameter fatality count. So, how would the data sound? You got to ask these questions how do you want it to sound? Or is this data in relation to the pitch? So figure out um, a major scale or any scales. You can create any scale you want. Um, so yeah, uh, that's something that you're interested in too. Just reach out to me and yeah, we'll figure out if you want to make a scale. Right now I'm using D minor. So in that scale, this includes these notes D, E, F, G, A, B flat, and C. And then we're going to pick a scale. Or we're going to map a data point to a note and the MIDI library takes in two arguments for that which is the scale and the scale point so let's class call the properly scaled note pass in the scale point and pass in the actual scale all right so this scale point is where a little magic happens that the library does so my MIDI has a linear scale and logarithmic scale point counters um, so right now it's taking in three values, but I think there's four values that it can take in overall. Um, so in this particular one, dot linear scale PCT, it's taking in three values. The first one is zero, which is the min fatality count and the data point 30 is the max fatality count. Now, like I said before, 30 is not the actual max. It's just the range of how many values are within that area. So um, I don't see a lot of 1700. That's an outlier, even though that's max. So I'm not going to put that. It's just the song's not going to come out well. But you can try it. So I'm going to print that note. Oh, and also like fatality count is the value that is being scaled so you pass in the fatality count in there and it finds a value for fatality count and then it scales that based on the scale that you provided and turns
assigned to a note. So it's B flat six. Okay, we want to translate that note that we just made into a MIDI pitch. So, we say MIDI pitch and call the library again. It has a function called that note to MIDI pitch and you pass in the note. And then we're just going to return the MIDI pitch. And now we have it have a note. Okay, time to make the actual song. So, this is a list that contains all the notes. And then we're going to loop through our data and create a note for each data point. So we're gonna append that to the song list. I'm just gonna that little snippet I wrote earlier. This is how you write a song in MIDI time. So remember time, pitch, velocity, duration. So we want the time first. So in my data time, we're just going to get the beat from there, minus the starting time. Then the pitch is, we call that function, and we convert the fatal account to that pitch. Then we're just going to add a global velocity, 90. And we're also going to add a global duration, which is two beats. So now we have a list of notes. So, and finally, we're almost there. We're going to add a track with those notes. So we're going to call MIDI li library again. Add that track, the list of notes, and then we're going to output that, write that into a file. Cool. Now head over to GarageBand and see what that sounds like. Okay, I'm gonna clear these up and then we're gonna listen to the song we just made.
and that's it for our tutorial thank you so much for watching this intro to data sonification please feel free to reach out if you have any more questions or just interested in talking about data or anything you have in mind regarding space apps or maybe even video games too cool have fun